Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to do a quick video to show you how you can hook up your old Sony PlayStation 2 to your computer so that you can play your games, but actually record them on your computer and then load them up to YouTube or Twitch or something like that if you're interested in doing it. I'm going to do this video. First, let me say I'm not a professional. I just do these videos to help people out. And I'm going to show you the things that worked for me. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it, but I'm just going to give you the items that I purchased and what worked for me, and then you can do your own homework or decide if you want to do it. The first thing you have to have is probably the hardest and most expensive thing to get, and that's an old uh, Sony PlayStation 2. And not only the Sony PlayStation 2, but you need these two cords so you can power and connect your PlayStation to your computer. So the first one, if you've got a PlayStation, hopefully you've got these already. This is just going to be your power cord. This goes to the back of your PlayStation. This goes to your wall outlet. And then this cord, again, one end connects to your PlayStation. The other, other end looks like your standard RCA cables. You've got a yellow, you've got a red, and you've got a white. So just like back in the old days, if you were going to play your PlayStation 2, these are the items that you have to have. So that's the first thing. Not only that, you're going to want a controller as well. The second thing you're going to need, and I'm going to put links to all of these items in my video so you can know what they are, where to get them. This is an HDMI to, uh, to RCA cable connector. I think it's called an HDMI box. Um, it cost me $13.59. This one's worked great for me. There's plenty of them on Amazon. I'm going to put the link to the one that I bought. So it's pretty simple. You've got a USB cord that you're going to use to power this item on. You can plug this into your computer. You can plug it into a wall outlet. And then you've got three ends for your RCA jack. But on the back side, you've got an HDMI import. So you can plug in an HDMI cord to it. Other than that, there's not much to it. On the side here, this is where you plug in your uh, USB cable. You've got an option for 720p. I'm hoping you guys are able to see that. 720p or 1080p, depending on what you're wanting to broadcast your PlayStation in. So we're going to plug this in. And it's pretty simple. All we're going to do is we're going to take the cords from our PlayStation and we're going to go yellow to yellow white to white, and red to red, just like back in the day when you were plugging it in to your television. So that's the first thing you need. Again, $13.59 is what I paid for. The second thing you're going to need, hopefully you've already got, and that's just an HDMI cable. If you don't have one, you can get them on Amazon, you can get them at uh, Walmart, anything like that. You've probably got this already. All we're going to do with the HDMI cable is you're going to plug one end of it into this white box that I just showed you. We're gonna keep the other end. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I'm just gonna plug this other end into my computer. At least for me, that doesn't work. Uh, I can never get any kind of signal if I just go from this straight to my computer. So what I had to buy is this other accessory. This one was a little bit more. It cost me $18.49. Now, there's some cheaper ones out there, but when I read the reviews, the one that I bought was the one that seemed to be the one most people swore by, and I've had no issues with it. So this is an HDMI video capture card. And all we're gonna do with this, let me show you first. When you get it, you get this capture card and you get this extension piece. You don't really have to use the extension, but what it does is it allows you to plug in the USB into your computer without having this big box that might be blocking one of your other USBs. So pretty simple. We've got one end of our HDMI cable into this white box. We're gonna take the other end of it and we're going to plug it into this converter. Then, I'm just going to put the extension piece on there, and I'm going to plug this into my computer. So hopefully you're with me at this point. All we've done is we've got our PlayStation, we've hooked it up to this RCA to HDMI box, we've hooked that up to an HDMI cable, and we've hooked the HDMI cable up to the USB extension that it comes with. We're going to plug this into our computer. So at this point, I'm going to go ahead and move to the computer, I'm going to get everything plugged in. I'm putting this in my computer. I'm putting this in my computer. I'm going to power up my Sony PlayStation and hook everything up to my PlayStation. And then we're going to see what happens on the computer. Okay, so now I'm on my computer. I hope you're going to be able to see this and hear me okay. We've plugged everything in. We've got the video capture card plugged into our computer. We've got our RCA to HDMI converter box plugged in either to our computer or to 
a uh, USB power source, whatever is easiest for you. And we have our PlayStation powered and we have it up and running. Now you're on your computer and you're like, why can't I see my PlayStation? So the other thing you need, and this is where there's gonna be a lot of booze, is you need a third party software on your computer that can actually read that the PlayStation is plugged into it. Now I'm gonna recommend this one. This is called Open Broadcast Software or OBS Studio. If you watch any YouTube gamers these days or people that are on Twitch and they're streaming, most of them are using this software. It's called OBS Studio, it's totally free. There's no add-ons, there's no gimmicks, there's no spyware. All you do is you go to this website, I'll put it in my video as well, and then you just choose the operating system that you're using. In my case, it was Windows. You download the software, puts it on your computer. There's nothing to it, it's very basic. You're gonna end up with an icon on your computer that looks like this, it's a black circle. Now, I'm recommending OBS Studio. There's plenty of other third-party softwares out there that you can use as well. I'm just recommending this one because I know it's safe, it's free, and it's easy to install and use. But you can use whatever you want. For my video purposes, we're using OBS Studio. When you go into it, what this is, is it's a software that can broadcast different things on your computer. Now you'll notice at first when you open it, it's just gonna be a black screen here. Down here in the bottom kind of middle, there's a section called sources. This is where you tell it what it is that you're wanting to broadcast. We're gonna click on the add button. Now you would think it would be game capture, but game capture is for somebody who's playing an actual computer game on the computer. In our case, we're not playing a computer game, we're playing a game on a software outside of the computer. So what we're gonna choose is video capture device. They'll come up and say, do you wanna create a new one or do you wanna add an existing one? You're gonna do create a new one. You can use the default name, which is video capture device, or you can rename it Sony PS2 or whatever you want it to be. And then we're gonna click okay. The next window is gonna come up. Usually your default is gonna be your webcam. If you've got a web camera on your computer, all you're gonna do is click on the device arrow and you're gonna choose USB video instead. And now you'll see my PlayStation playing in the background. I'm gonna click okay. Now we have our Sony PlayStation 2 plugged into our computer and we're basically using our computer as the monitor to play our PlayStation instead of using the TV like we did back in the day. I've got my controller in my hand. You can't see that now. I just clicked the start button. I've got NCAA 2006 football on my computer and I'm gonna start playing it. Now, the one thing I will say that I can't figure out and maybe somebody out there can help me with it is unfortunately when you do it this way, you can see the game, and if you record it, you will get the sound on the game, but you won't get, you won't get, uh, you won't be able to hear the sound until you play back the recording. So for example, I'm gonna go to play now. Now I'm just gonna pick a team, and I'm gonna start playing. And I'm gonna start, you'll notice over here, I can start streaming it to either YouTube or uh, Twitch or something like that, or I can start recording if I wanted to record the game. So I'm gonna click start recording. And again, you'll notice that we don't hear any of the sound coming from the PlayStation 2 when we do it this way. And again, that could be something that I've got configured wrong, or you might need a different audio input or something, but I can see it and I can play just fine. As I'm playing though, down here in the bottom for mic and auxiliary, you can see that it's reading the sound. You just can't hear it playing while you're playing it. So let me return this kick. We're recording this and in a second, we'll do the playback so you can see what the playback is like. Let's see if I can return one to the house for you guys. Yeah, I didn't think so. Anyway, I'm gonna do quit. Down here, I'm gonna do stop recording. And at any point, I can simply close OBS Studio. And it basically, it's like, it's almost like shutting off your TV monitor if you were playing PlayStation at home. My PlayStation is still running. I'm just not seeing the display. Here's the video that we just produced. I'm gonna double click it. We should hear the sound playing through this.
So you'll notice during the playback, we've got Houston down first. lines up to kick this one off, and we're just about set to get underway. And this one's a short kick. Number 80 fields it at the 11. So anyway, that's what the video file looks like. And as I mentioned before, now you've got that video file. So if you wanted to go load it to YouTube or email it to a buddy to show them the play you made or whatever you're doing on your PlayStation 2, you've successfully connected your PlayStation 2 to your computer and you've had the ability to stream it or record the video. I hope this makes sense. I hope it helps you out. At least it gets it to where you can get your PlayStation, play it on your computer, bring back some of those old memories of playing those old classic video games. I hope this video helps. If you've got any questions, post them in the comments. Thanks for watching.